find Eileen Webster, the health eating specialist from Whole Foods Market in Andover. She's, we're going to learn easy and delicious ways to eat more whole foods. We're going to discover how to incorporate more nutrient-dense whole foods into our food choices while watching Eileen prepare portions of a meal and snacking on some samples. Free food. No wonder there's almost uh, 40 people here. All right, so um, all of us, let's give a big round of applause to Eileen. Oh, Eileen's. gosh, do that later. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Thank you. I'll move around, I feel like I've got, but since we have some great first row people, I don't want to be talking right, right at you. So welcome, thanks for coming today. I want to clarify, Robert, um, I'm so passionate about this, I would donate my time, but I am actually working right now for Whole Foods Market in Andover, and that store, Whole Foods, is donating some of the things you're having and my time to come, because it really falls into one of the Whole Foods Market's core values. We have many of them, but one is to provide healthy eating education to our community, and this is one of the ways we do that. And I'm going to probably forget, so since this spins right on it, another way we do that, and there's a handout here that you can take or pick up if you haven't, is that um, in Andover, I run them, but we offer um, uh, free store tours to anyone, and that isn't really, you know, it can be whatever you need it to be. And you can come by yourself or with family or friends, and uh, maybe you have some specific uh, diet challenges you're trying to figure out ways to address. Maybe you just want to learn more about what's at Whole Foods versus somewhere else and why is it different or is it different. Anything at all. Um, and we love doing it. There's no obligation. There's no fee. You don't have to buy anything. It's just an opportunity for you to learn a little more, maybe have some questions answered. So that's available, and my email address is there. So you can just email me and we can schedule a time that works. So we just, I just want to no, let you know that's available. Um, so as Robert said, um, I'm the healthy eating specialist at Whole Foods Andover and I'm also a culinary demo specialist. So I do two different jobs. I've been in Andover for over 10 years so I actually do many, many jobs. <laughs> and um, I'm also a certified health coach and a mother of three grown children. Um, and a person who's just paid attention throughout my life to uh, sometimes more than others, but the impact that food has on us, which is really important, I believe. Um, so, rethink your plate, learn about whole foods, nutrient dense. This all sort of falls into a category that we all tend to refer to pretty straightforwardly as healthy eating, right? Oh, they told me I should be, the doctor said I should be eating more healthy. Um, I'm going to try to be a healthier eater. Oh, you know, so what does this mean to you? What, what does healthy eating mean, just anybody, to you? Fruits and vegetables, anything else? Less processed food. What else? Less sugar. Oh, you guys are good. Less salt, depends on? Less carbs. Yeah, well that's a broad one, carbs. Which carbs, we can talk about that. Less calories, depends on maybe. <laughs> maybe. Oh, boy. Organic food can have a huge impact, um, but doesn't have to be all the time. All right, so those are all, and are there any, um, any trends out there about what we should be eating? The keto. 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 I'm going to talk more about sugar and that comes into play and 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 so there is you know there's pros and cons to everything yeah well that's that's a whole nother there's so much to talk about that we may not get to all of it but um, yes that is one school of thought pH and alkaline I'm probably not going to talk about that now but for no reason other than there's only so much we can cover but that can have a real impact and um, and one of the things I learned as I was learning more about let's just say nutrition was to learn about a lot of different things even conflicting information think about yourself and your own life and lifestyle and and all the challenges that you face and figure out what makes the most sense for you. So there is no hard and fast, I believe, there is no hard and fast, like eat keto, 
eat carbs, don't eat carbs. You know, there's, it's, it's broader, it's more specific and we're more bio-individual than that as well. So what works for you, in some cases, may not work as well for me. But let's circle back to this whole healthy eating, such a broad category. And it is hard to define. So what I found for myself as I talk to different people in, in workshops like this or at the store or whatever it might be is I really like the word nourishment better. Because nourishment really talks more about what food provides us, doesn't provide us, what it does for our bodies, and what it doesn't do for our bodies. And I think you might all agree, looking at the choices out there to, available to everyone these days, um, things do fall into categories where food can be extremely nourishing for us, which means we have great energy every day, or most days, we sleep well, we think clearly, all the good stuff that we need every day, uh, no matter, you know, we're not even talking about avoiding diseases down the road, we're just talking about every day when we live our lives, we want to feel well, sleep well, be clear-minded. And then there's a lot of food out there that is non-nourishing and even anti-nourishing. Um, so I do want to focus on that as well. Um, one of you in answering about healthy foods said, I think, um, whole foods and not the store. Um, yes. Very much so. Um, so one of the, the things, um, because often I have um, folks talking to me and they're just like, I, I don't know. You know, I hear we should eat low sodium. Then they say, it's not that important. And I hear, uh, you know, uh, eat carbs, don't eat carbs. I'm just crazy and I'm frustrated and I want to do the right thing, but I give up. I just give up and I'm just going to eat whatever the heck I want. And, you know, we've all probably been or close to that sort of mindset, unless you're an extremely disciplined person. Um, and so let's make it easier, right? Because having, I think that having stress every day over what we're eating or what we're not eating, that alone is not nourishing for us. It's not only the food that we put in, but how we're feeling about ourselves and, and what we're eating. So I, this is really a little short for me, but, um, <laughs> But well, I like to simplify it very much so. So pardon my back for a moment. Um, we have two categories of food, and we've mentioned them, whole foods and processed foods, right? So when you get to the point, whatever stage of the game, where you're just saying, I give up. I give up. I'm just going to eat whatever I want, drink whatever I want. I don't care. Um, instead, of getting, well, instead of getting to that point, do an easy exercise. Sit down with a piece of paper. It's says very low tech, I'm very low tech. And draw a line. Whole foods on one side, processed foods on the other. And start to think about the choices you've made over the last day, the last few days, in the food you ate and the things you drank, because that falls right into this category as well. And start asking yourself, is this a whole food? Is it literally an apple? Right? Or is it, um, so that obviously, so it is. So I had an apple, so it goes there. Um, did I have like um, apple chips? You know, some oil, some salt, maybe they, I don't know, maybe I did, so that's pretty close to a processed food. Um, yogurt, where do you think yogurt might fall? Do you have, a lot of, anyone eat yogurt? Processed, real yogurt. It depends on what kind of yogurt. I know, so yeah. I heard real yogurt, it depends, and processed. So you know what? All of those. <laughs> Yogurt falls into all of those categories. Um, so you can have a organic um, plain yogurt and add a little fruit to it, some berries or something. That's pretty much um, a whole food. Uh, and or someone might have, I guess the real other end of the spectrum, but a Trix yogurt or a Yoplait yogurt. <laughs> And that is as much a junk food as anything else. The, the snag is that it has the word yogurt on it. And so well-intending shoppers who are busy and trying to do the right things think, think yogurt, that's good for me. And, and, and it goes into the cart as opposed to discerning a little bit between, well, well is it a whole food um, or is it a processed food? Why would the Yoplait yogurt, what things would make a yogurt a processed food? Sure. Yes, what else? Yeah, yeah, artificial colors, flavors, preservatives, chemicals, artificial sweeteners, too much sugar, because even lactose is a sugar. There's no way to have a yogurt 
even plain without a little sugar. It's how much and how often. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and then it, and all of that. Why is yogurt a healthy food for us if it's something you like? What's good about it? Probiotics is actually one of the biggest ones. Probiotics. Um, so that's because it's a cultured fermented food. You know, every culture in our, every culture has some form of a fermented food in their diet because fermented foods are just a very good way to get the, to continue to nourish our gut, basically. And um, there's been a whole lot written lately about our gut biome, as they call it, and the importance of the bacteria that lives down there. And there's a huge impact that food has on that. Um, and so it's just an, a source of calcium and of protein and also um, another probiotic source. But if you don't eat dairy for some reason, you can get those from other fermented foods like tempeh and um, uh, different sauerkrauts and kimchi. So all the cultures have their different fermented foods. Sourdough, real sourdough. It's kind of interesting. So um, everything falls here and it's really easy. So you, you just, you know, you go through a day and you start, start plotting and plotting and plotting and depending on who you are and what you're eating, you take a picture later and you say, well, how am I doing? And it's as simple as just saying, well, if I have this many processed foods, let me see where I can start to make incremental changes and gradually start pushing more and more of my choices toward or all the way to a whole food. And if the diet is dominant in whole foods, you don't really have to work a lot harder than that to, to minimize the majority of things that we should most of the time be avoiding and to maximize the majority of things that give us the greatest nourishment. Does that make sense? So it doesn't have to get highly complex. If you have a, a specific health condition um, or allergy, then that's obviously an exception to it. You have to work within those guidelines. But um, when, when every other day we turn on the news, open up a paper, or see something on, on a website um, that's giving us new information, this is so important, you have to make sure, you know, uh, do this, don't do that, it, it can become frustrating. So keep it simple. Focus, if the majority of your food in a day is close to or a whole food, then enjoy life, <laughs> eat and, and enjoy it. Because if we don't enjoy what we're eating, or if we're eating literally under stress, like, uh, you know, okay, another example, if there's something that I'm told kale is good for me, I should really eat kale, but I hate kale. And you're eating it like that, right? Guess what, you're not gonna digest it well, you're not gonna assimilate the nutrients that are in there well, so find something else that's good for you, nourishing. And, you know, try kale another time. Although you get to try it today, um, because I brought some. Um, so, does that help? How does that feel? Does that make sense? So, the most important thing is to not overcomplicate it. Um, what makes it extremely challenging is that we have food available to us in the world we live in right now, everywhere. Everywhere we go. The distinction is, is that really food that nourishes us, or is it, as some refer to it, food-like substances that really are not in any way a food. We have a lot of that. And I believe um, this lady right here mentioned something about the combination of sugar and fat. And if you add salt to that, that's really the recipe that the majority of, let's call them junk food, manu food manufacturers have used. And you can read this, this is not like some strange thing, there's uh, things written where the manufacturers have literally worked to develop something they call the bliss point of taste. And that bliss point is where, well, did you ever get to the bottom of a bag of chips and say, why did I just eat all of those? Or cookies, yeah. or ice cream. And that's because of the combination of sugar, fat, and often salt as well is it's put together in a way that literally overrides our natural appetite control systems that are there to help us. And, and, it, and we just, we don't, we don't have any control, pretty much. And those foods are generally very nutrient deficient. So guess what happens uh, an hour later? You're hungry and tired. 
looking for the next thing. Oh good, I'm just passing another mini mark, no problem. <laughs> it's, but that's unfortunately the way it's, it's devised. So um, a little aside, because I just reminded my, myself of something. If you are going in the car anywhere, please don't ever get in a car for any distance of travel without water. And um, I'll talk about why nuts, if you can eat them, are an amazing snack. Uh, fruit, a little cheese. Um, so that when that hunger comes, you don't pull into the mini mart. Because guess what everything there is except maybe a banana? A food-like substance. <laughs> and it's not going to serve you and nourish you. So that's just me encouraging that. Um, okay. So I'm going to talk about a few things up here. Any questions? A lot of you came in with questions, which was awesome. Yes. Um, there's a, there's a, I'm trying to think of the ingredient, or the chemical in it, oxalates, I believe. But that's not in kale, it's actually more in spinach, I believe. I'd have to double check that. Yeah. So I've never, I've read anything about, about kale, other than good stuff. Uh, yes. Can you talk a little bit about meat substitutes? Oh. Yes, I can. Oh, they are. Are you a vegan? My daughter's a vegan. We're in a circle of that's still processed. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Matter of fact, oh, I should say too that I love working for Whole Foods Market. But if I were to take you on a store tour, I would be very frank about. Many of the things that I think, even though we sell them, doesn't mean I recommend them as something you eat regularly. I call it the Whole Foods Halo. People walk in the store and go, goody, goody, I can eat everything in here. No, it doesn't work that way. Um, and why I bring that up is because we have a new product that's not only at Whole Foods called Beyond Beef that people are just like going crazy for. Be have you heard about these? No. Um, they are a, uh, they make more than just this, but they have burgers and they are, um, they include beet juice in them so that, uh, and the way they're made also gives a consistency when cooked like a burger. It also, you know, bleeds a little because of the beet juice and, um, and has a really great taste. Very processed. Um, very processed. I think one of the first ingredients is some form of oil and the second ingredient is some form of oil and you go on from there. So, you know, just do this with your daughter. Is it a whole food or a processed food? You know what a whole food that's a great substitute for meat for vegans is um, tempeh. It works great like ground beef. It's a whole fermented soybean. So all that's how, it, and get, you get it organic. Organic whole fermented soybean. High protein, high fiber, fermented food benefits. You can use it like a ground beef substitute in a lot of different ways. So, so my personal opinion is that the, a great majority of the fake meat products, just they fall here. Sometimes, okay. As a regular component of your food, I don't think it's going to nourish you as well as other choices. So, yeah. Uh, let me just talk about a few things here. We talk about whole foods and processed foods. Um, okay, let's see, let's see. Well, what did you have for breakfast today? Anybody? Hmm? Oatmeal? Did you have oatmeal? Oatmeal or oatmeal? Rolled oats, steel cut oats, or one of these little? Oh, okay. Whole food, steel cut oats, whole food. I'll tell you in a minute. Anyone have an oatmeal out of these, out of here? You did? Okay. Good, okay. Well, see, this is an example of something whole food sells. Our quality standards, our baseline quality standards are much higher than many others. So it is, you know, it's, it's worth learning more about if you don't shop there. Um, so there's nothing, this is organic, there's nothing, no preservatives, no artificial sweeteners, no artificial colors or flavors, so that's great. I feel like I'm doing a kids workshop, we do thumbs up. Um, uh, that's, that's great. Uh, it's how we digest it that is a bit of a snag there. So I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Well, actually, I'm going to talk about that now. So you're having breakfast, blood sugar's low because you've been resting, you haven't eaten in a while. What we eat first is going to have a huge impact on that, right? 
So what are some common breakfast foods if you don't have steel cut oats in the morning? Eggs. Okay, fruit, eggs, dairy, juice, juice, juice. Cereal. yogurt, cereal, toast. Okay. Granola, oh yeah, that's a dangerous one. <laughs> um, I really, I really, oh, oh, I know, you know all this, right? So, well, we can write processed foods again, yeah. or the line. Um, so, the blood sugar is a huge factor in how we feel and how we avoid disease. Huge. Do you know about, that? probably some of this? Um, okay, so when we start out in the morning and our blood sugar is low and we have um, steel cut oats, I'll tell you one minute, um, with maybe some milk or non-dairy milk and hmm, some blueberries, um, our, our, gosh, our low blood sugar will go up and it'll kind of stay, right? When we have the little package of I don't care if it's organic or not, um, of instant oatmeals, which generally have sweeteners added, and maybe some fruit added, and then maybe we add something to it, it will go up much more rapidly, our blood sugar. Well, this marker isn't helping, is it? Um, it'll go up much more rapidly. If we have a glass of orange juice, it'll practically go straight up. Um, if we have an egg, it'll be pretty slow. Okay. If we have a piece of uh, a white English muffin by itself, it'll go straight up. And what happens after the, the, where it rises quickly, it comes right back down very fast. And that's the danger. What we'll feel is a little tired, fatigued, and hungry. We'll want more. So that's annoying, but it's really not damaging. Where it gets uh, damaging is that there are so many refined carbohydrates, refined flour products, easily available to us everywhere, and things with added sugar, and things that are sources of sugar by themselves, that most Americans on a pretty typical diet, blood sugar throughout the day is on a roller coaster like this. Um, so I already said, you get tired and hungry and want more, so that perpetuates our always wanting to eat um, and craving usually the stuff that gives us that quick energy right back again. But the other, the other consequence of this scenario is something called chronic inflammation or low-level inflammation. Is that something anyone's read about, heard about? I see nods and nos and sort of. Okay. Um, chronic low-level inflammation has been fully researched as the um, underlying cause of cardiac disease. You can read that. It's out there. It's proven. And a lot of studies going on as to being the um, underlying cause potentially for many diseases. Because, mainly because it puts our body in a state that it, it, it doesn't belong in. Every time our, our blood sugar goes up rapidly, it comes down rapidly. And what that triggers is the flight or fight response. You heard about that. Okay, fight or flight, a hardwired response we've had as human beings forever to avoid um, a threat, right? A threat, you know, the old, you know, saber-toothed tiger is coming to attack us. And so what happens? Our body prepares. It slows metabolism, it, it stores fat, and it pumps out stress hormones, getting ready to go. Only there's no, nothing threatening us. And if it happens once a month, your body recovers. If it happens multiple times throughout a day, it sets up a situation where our body gets chronically inflamed and it sets up a host of problems, aside from the fact that you just won't feel good that day. You'll be looking for the next quick energy, the Dunkin' Donuts, coffee, the, uh, you know, the soda, the candy, whatever it might be, because you're like, I don't know why I'm so tired today. Also, one of the reasons we get tired in the afternoon is lack of, uh, we're dehydrated, so drink some water. Um, so this is just not a, sta a state we want to be in. So we want to think about slow digesting low sugar foods as a way to just maintain um, a nice steady blood sugar throughout the day. When our blood sugar is, has you know, nice little wavy moments and pretty steady, then so are we, and so is our, our body, and so is the way it operates, and so is the way it will work for us. So, um, 
So this is just always a visual I like. I know, everyone loves these. <laughs> but this in your body is no different than this. Okay? What is, what is sugar. <laughs> Cane sugar, not that it makes any difference. Sugar is sugar is sugar. Doesn't matter when you read labels, which is really important to do. Brown sugar, molasses, cane sugar, um, God, there's a million names. They're all sugar in the body. It doesn't matter. Honey is sugar. You know, you want to get a few minerals? Honey has minerals. Well, that's good. Eat vegetables. They have a lot of minerals. Um, so sugar is sugar. This is it. The reason this is like sugar in your body is because our body doesn't have to work to digest it. No work. These are so refined, all of the bran and the endosperm and the healthy fats that are in whole grains have been taken away. So our digestive enzymes just go, thank you, boom, blood sugar up. Doesn't have to work, it tastes yummy. Now, if you have it with butter or cream cheese or smoked salmon, it tastes yummy. And the way I refer to that is, um, it's basically, this becomes a delivery system, a non-nutritive delivery system for the other stuff. Okay, so, you know, some good quality dairy or some smoked salmon. This just is like gonna go with it, but it's not giving you anything except some calories. However, adding that protein from the salmon or the fat from the sour cream or maybe avocado, that will slow the digestion down. So it will, as opposed to eating it all by itself, then it's really like a shot of sugar. Um, the, back to the oatmeals, um, this is gonna be hard to see uh, with the group size, but when it comes to oats, uh, oats are, are an oat groat, which kind of looks like a long grain piece of rice almost. I didn't bring that, yes? I was just gonna um, just ask you a quick question about yeah. what you had just finished up on. Sure. Um, so you mentioned that the fats help the body um, break down food a little bit slower. Um, it, it, we digest more slowly, correct. So if I were to, um, like if I wanna slow my, um, digestion down to keep my blood sugar nice and low, but I need to eat a fat and a sugar um, simultaneously, or could I ingest the fat earlier and then eat the sugar? Well, just... yeah, you don't have to feel so, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be so prescriptive. I mean, we all are going to have our best health by maintaining, well, eating very low sugar in general, which is hard to do, um, and not having these big fluctuations. That's the main thing to avoid. So. By eating, by not going extended periods of time without eating, by not eating highly refined carbohydrates and sugar-rich foods, you'll do that. Okay. Healthy fats and protein normally digest more slowly in our body, and high-fiber foods as well. So that if those are included in your diet, of which are most whole foods, so again, sticking closer to a whole food dominant diet is going to, this will just happen for you without you having to really think hard about it then that will, that will be the result. One sec, I just want to talk. So an oat groat is, an, is, is the oat. Steel cut oats are literally just what they sound, chop. That's it, nothing else has been done, steel cut oats. Then they take that chopped oat, you know, splash of steam and roll it, rolled oats, which is the same as old fashioned oats, identical. And then there's, um, they further chop up um, those that become instant or quick cooking oats. So, there's no reason to ever buy these because rolled oats will cook in a microwave if you're really in a hurry and you need something instant in three minutes or less. So if you don't have that much time, then you need to plan a little more time for your breakfast. Rolled oats are excellent. Steel cut oats are even, steel cut oats are even better because they just digest that much more slowly. Okay, so the nutrient difference isn't really there. It's just this is the most slowly digesting and this is not quite as slowly digesting. Okay. Um, if, uh, later, uh, if you want to know an easy way to make steel cut oats where it doesn't, because these take longer to cook, but there's really easy ways around them. Yeah. If you add cinnamon to the rolled oats, that takes longer to flow, right? Longer? Cinnamon? Oh, uh, I haven't actually heard that, but cinnamon's a very helpful spice to it, and it helps you to tap down your craving for sweet. Yeah. Um, so that's why I have all of these here. Uh, similarly, just another quick cereal example, and this is also a shopping example. I always tell people, I don't care if you're in Whole Foods or Market Basket or Stop and Shop, uh, glance at what is on the package, but don't pay incredible attention to it because it's marketing. 
So, you know, um, this is a terribly marketing. I forgot to bring the one that really is. Oh, but, um, but basically, this is just, you know, so you think, oh, well, it's organic, so that's good. And brown rice, I know brown rice is better than white rice, which is true from a nutrient-dense whole grain perspective. But once you puff a cereal, a grain, once you puff a grain, again, it becomes like our digestive enzymes don't have to work to digest it. They grab it and poof, it's digested in no time. So while you're working hard to be good and make good choices, if you were to have this brown rice crisp cereal, um, even with some milk, like say you have it the same way as an oatmeal with some milk and some blueberries, this will digest much more quickly than if it were steel cut oats. Does that make sense? With milk and blueberries. So uh, this is not horrible. It's just that you're gonna be hungry sooner if you have this for breakfast, most likely. This is better, shredded wheat. That's all it is, shredded wheat, shredded, and not highly processed, so what your body's gonna take long, excuse me, longer to digest it. We can continue that way. Um, a very challenging food to shop for if you're trying to think whole foods versus processed foods is sliced bread. Uh, absolutely, please read ingredient lists on them because one of the things we talk about avoiding sugar, there's a lot of sugar in many breads as well as sodium, but, and are your body, like, so if I'm choosing an organic 100% whole wheat bread, what do you think my goal is there? What am I really focused on? Yeah, whole wheat, whole grain, not a whole bunch of sugar. Um, and some, some breads are outrageous. So it's really important to read the ingredients. It doesn't have to just say sugar. A lot of breads say honey, barley, malt, molasses, you know, all these, but they, you know, it's not. And even though this is 100% whole wheat, if I were to open it up, you could never find a whole grain in here. I mean, visually. Right, so it, that, the whole grain is there, but it's been processed into a flour, so it will digest more quickly than something that is more dense. I didn't bring it, but if you've ever eaten like Comisbrot, the really dense like German rye bread or something, you, I mean, that's serious grain, you know, the big grains are in there. Um, one that I've, so again, you know, sugar, unless you had, just like the bagel. Um, but a brand I happen to like, um, it's not the only one, uh, yes. Well, you want to see, well, they can, or you want to see what the first ingredient is. Always the first ingredient is the main whole. It has to literally have the word whole. Uh, wheat flour is all flour, but it's easily easy to get confused. Um, so you want to see what the first ingredient is, because that's the dominant ingredient. Um, this brand, I'm not advertising, but kind of I am just because I love it. Um, Ezekiel brand uh, breads, they make a whole line of breads. These are 100% organic sprouted whole grains. There's no flour in the bread or in the, the um, English muffins. If you toast these, they're so good. And, and if you were to do a little experiment one morning, you know, eat toasted plain a white English muffin, the next day eat one of these plain, you'll see how much longer it is until you're hungry. If you can really do the experiment yourself and see. Um, so look for whole grains, low sugar, and um, Predominantly, you know, whole, just a real dense whole grain, and and um, and also, you know, just eat a lot of whole grains as meals. You know, the breads and things don't have to be in there all the time. I'm going to call the lady back there because she's been very patient. Yes. They they have a, they have a, they have a oatmeal. You had oatmeal? Yes, oatmeal here. Oh, I have a lot of oatmeal here. A lot of different oatmeal. I love oatmeal. Yeah. You do like it? Did you say? Yeah. Good. That's great. That's a good food to eat. I you should. Eat with the it's good. It's better than a lot of the cereal choices that are out there for I you. I only in one day a month. Okay, awesome. And did you? No, what about sourdough bread? Yeah. If it's an authentic sourdough, um, then you have the fermented starter of sourdough, which is very helpful. And and generally, if you were to look at the ingredients, there's probably three ingredients. In you know, it's like flour, salt, sourdough starter. You know, so. That's, that's great too. It's going to, um, you know, digestion wise, it'll probably digest, digest a little more quickly, but it's still, it's a very, you know, a, a classic Frank ba a baguette, French baguette, um, is like three ingredients. So, you know, if you, and it doesn't mean you should never have something like that. You just want to, you know, just, uh, it's, it's better than a lot of the breads that are out there. And the other thing that's in a lot of breads and a lot of products that we don't have any of in Whole Foods is preservatives. 
So no product in the store has a preservative, an artificial color, flavor, um, or any, anything artificial. So um, that's also important. When I have to start making this while I continue to talk. But when I, when I do um, classes for little kids, I do store tours for a lot of little kids, which is great. I love it. And um, the way I explain um, artificial colors, mo mostly colors and flavors to them, and is, um, and I'm going to do it for you too because, heck, what the hell. I say, um, you know, an apple, if I eat an apple, my body says, thank you, Eileen. I recognize everything in that apple and I just had to use all of it to nourish you or and for the kids, I say, to give you good energy, right? Which is true. And then I whip out a bag of Skittles. And it's a bag of Skittles that I've literally had in my desk for six years because I never open them. I only use them for the workshops. And their eyes all bug out, you know, it's like, and, and I talked to them about, you know, the colors and that they don't come from a whole food in nature. And so when I eat the Skittle, the red Skittle, my body says, I'm sorry, I have no idea what you just gave me. Don't know how to use it to give you good energy, but I do have to take some of your energy to get rid of it. I have to process it through your kidneys and your liver. I don't say that to them. Uh, so if you don't even get into the studies on which red dye number whatever gives or could lead to some disease. Beyond even that, just think about the fact that all of that artificial stuff we don't need, it gives us nothing and it makes our body work harder to eliminate it. Let's save that energy for all the other stuff we like to do and not that. So, um, so whole foods, dark green leafy vegetables, one of my favorites. They have been growing in popularity, but they have generally are the most nutrient dense, least eaten vegetable that's out there. What else? Any dark green leafy vegetables. So I'm sure a very commonly eaten one is spinach. But then when we branch out from there to kale and, well, some of these, um, it, you know, sometimes there's less familiarity, less comfort level on what to do or how to prepare them. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to somehow talk, make a salad, talk about it, and also talk about this because I didn't get to it yet. <laughs> All right, well, just one moment, please. All right, so this is something that Whole Foods put together um, eight years ago, maybe. Um, there was a whole cadre of doctors working with our, our um, owner, John Mackey, and, um, and it's, it was, you know, just called Rethink Your Plate. You can all take a copy. And it was one approach to um, eating in a way that will support our health and nourish us better. Um, all the things I've been talking about. And uh, one of the biggest messages, if you look at this plate, that's different also from our USDA and some others, but is half of everything we eat in a day, ideally, should be what? Can you tell? No. Vegetables. Vegetables. <laughs> Vegetables. You know, we always say fruits and vegetables, and I know you had a point about fruits, and, and everyone has a different take on things, so this is just one more point to consider. Fruits are out here, whole fruit. Vegetables are here, because generally, as a population, we're not eating as many vegetables and all the nutrients they give us, and we're, we eat a lot of fruit. And it is a natural sugar, and it can assimilate, but it can also do that to us, if eaten by itself. So it's all about when you eat it and how. But the short message is, Almost all of us can do well by pushing in more vegetables. Pushing in more vegetables. When we go around this plate, when you take a look at it, the other key messages are that, um, and you, I'm sure you, you know this, I mean, the, the America is so well known for what's generally the center of our plate is what? The animal protein, right? And it doesn't need to be in the center. It really needs to be on the side as like a four ounce portion and this is, you know, you'll hear this on many approaches to, um, you know, best ways to sort of compose your plate of food. The protein can be much smaller. Um, there's protein in everything. There's protein in this kale, there's protein in broccoli. So it's very hard for us in our society, unless we have a digestive issue, compromise in some way, or we're simply not eating enough food, it's very difficult for us to not gain or get the protein that we really need. So um, that can be a little smaller, um, a lot of vegetables. And then this portion of whole grains looks like a lot. And the way I clarify that is I don't, if you don't eat a lot of whole grains, don't feel like I should suddenly start eating more whole grains. 
but rather stop and take a look at the foods you're selecting that are made from grain and try wherever you can to just make sure um, it is a whole grain source and not a processed grain source. That's the most important distinction um, so that you get all the benefits. Oh, okay. So, uh, dark and leafy vegetables. I'm going to make a salad using kale. Kale, um, we have red curly kale. Nutrient wise, they're all really the same. I mean, the, the antioxidants might be a little different in this because it's purple, not green, but that's minimal. So, there's um, red curly kale, green curly kale, and uh, one that I'm not going to use in this, but I really love. This is called Lacinato. It has three names Lacinato, Tuscan, or Dinosaur Kale. Oh, I think sometimes it's called black kale, too. I don't know why they like to name it so much. But um, so nutrient-wise, they're all saying um, it's all about how you use it, what you prefer, or like. Um, and then some other great dark green leafy vegetables. This is, anyone know of this? Swiss chard. Swiss chard, yep. Uh, did you say beet tops? Did you say? Well, it's in the same family as beets, so that's why it's very familiar. And also in the same family as spinach. So there's rainbow and white and red Swiss chard and collard greens, um, which are all um, just boatloads of nutrition. But you have to find a way that you really like to eat them, that encourages you to eat them and get the benefits. Um, so the salad today, you all, if, for those of you who took a handout, you have the recipe. For those of you who haven't, it's right up here. What I like about this is that it is other than one ingredient, which is an organic tamari. Tamari is a soy sauce that's gluten-free. I choose this because sometimes I have folks trying this that have a gluten intolerance or allergy. Um, and this is also low sodium. But other than this, every ingredient in here is a whole food. So that's, that's a plus. And they're all nutrient dense. And we've put it together and you can try it and see if it's something you like. Uh, many times people don't have uh, kale as a, uh, a raw. Um, a good way to, um, to cook kale, if you just or any dark green leafy, and you want to keep it simple, chop it up, saute with a little olive oil and garlic. It's great. Um, you can put it in omelets. You can add it to soups. You can do this with any, any dark green leafy vegetable, except collard greens. I might qualify those. Um, so. I'm going to be asking for a volunteer in a few minutes to help me, but I'm just going to get some of these things in here. Um, on this, on Rethink Your Plate, um, another category are healthy fats. Avocados are a great healthy fat. They used to be, well, so did fat, used to be demonized somewhat. We've come full circle in that regard. Um, any questions about fats while I'm chopping? Hun? I Yes? a lot of avocado oil. You use a lot of avocado oil? I do because it has a higher um, smoke smoking point. Yeah. Is it, is it bad? Is it? Like, I don't know all that much about it, but I like it. And it doesn't have any flavor to it. So I right. So replace all the vegetable oils. Yeah. So um, avocado oil, other than it being pretty expensive, um, depends on what you get. is it organic? Mm -hmm. Good. Um, is, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I, mean, I, I think that, um, I know I regularly do uh, sautés and everything just with olive oil. Um, the only trick to olive oil is you, you don't want it to get to a smoking point um, because then it breaks down. Um, and so those, are, then there are some high heat cooking oils like avocado, um, but also um, safflower and um, grapeseed and a whole variety of others that you can use. Um, the, the qualifier is if it's not organic oil, um, one th thing is that to, let's say, take grapeseed oil. We were talking about this before. Think about a grapeseed, and they're going to get oil from that. <laughs> so um, it's really the process involves a lot of chemical solvents to extract the oil from the source. And um, so you're getting some of that in your oil. You know, a little sometimes, no big deal. On a regular basis, you know, our body's already challenged with enough stuff even, even when, you know, just day to day. So I like to minimize those kinds of things. Um, so again, also, the other way to look at it is whole food and processed food. 
Um, an avocado is a whole food. Its oil is processed. Um, how processed depends on the, the method used to process, like I was just talking about. An olive is a whole food and olive oil is processed, but um, most of the methods for processing olive oil are pretty clean, so that's, um, that's okay. Um, the, other, the other thing about um, uh, fat is this thing called omega-3s and omega-6s. Is that something you've heard about? Yes? Why don't you tell me what you know so I can stop babbling? <laughs> Pardon me? Yeah, do you know why? Brain food. That's cool. Brain food. Uh, what about the sixes? Use in moderation. Uh, yeah, but the, the you're right. Do you, and the reason is, the challenge for us is that they're uh, in everything nowadays. Um, so omega-3s and omega-6s are uh, essential fatty acids, which means we need them to function, but we do not produce them. We have to get them from food. And it just in nature, if you stuck completely exclusively with all the whole foods that exist in nature, there are simply more sources of omega-6s than there are of omega-3s. Um, and why are these important? They work uh, together in the body, and they, the ideal sort of ratio in our body of them is a 2 to 1, 2, 6 to 1 omega-3. Um, omega-3s are anti-inflammatory and omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. Now inflammation, I was just referring to it in a negative connotation, but the positive connotation of inflammation in the body is our healing process. So we need our healing process to operate correctly, but the problem that exists now and then leads back to that same sort of chronic inflammation um, issue I was mentioning is that, um, again, standard American diet, a majority of Americans are walking around, so it should be a um, let's get this wrong, like a six omega six to omega three kind of ratio. Most of us are walking around with an omega six to an omega three ratio because one of the most significant reasons is because um, of so many foods that are either cooked out of the house or are processed, and the oils that are used are like soybean oil. Um, uh, corn oil, ve vegetable oil, and these are all omega-6 sources. And they have increased so significantly in our diet that um, that's, an e that's had a huge impact. The other impact has been um, factory farming of animals because um, while whole grains are wonderful for us, they are an omega-6 source. And so when we started taking cows who graze on grass, and guess what? Greens are an omega-3 source. So they started, they were grazing on grass, their body was designed to graze on grass, and they were getting omega-3s, and suddenly we switched it over and started feeding them grain instead. Grains an omega-6 source, so now this grass-fed meat omega-3 source that was uh, typically our diets uh, went away. So there's another one. And then things typically like poultry and other things are omega-6 sources, so it, it becomes uh, challenging uh, to, to gain, you know, enough of the omega-3. Some people supplement, um, which is, you know, supplementation should be just what it is, supplementing, but you start with the food. And again, if you just focus, it's not there anymore, but if you focus on more whole foods that are raised the way they should be, pastured and grass-fed um, and less processed, again, see, you're going to eliminate a lot of those omega-6s and, um, yes. Uh, you can save them. A lot of people save. They're very. They're too fibrous. You can, like any scraps, you can cook them down in stock and, you know, freeze it. But otherwise, you know, compost. Um, yes, I'm listening, but I'm behind time, so I gotta keep cutting. Uh, yes. Um, salmon is supposed to be high in omega. Is it omega three? Yes. Uh, it is omega three. Uh, well, I mean, every, every source of an omega is like, has some of each, but it's dominant as omega-3. All cold water fish are. Um, salmon's one of the highest. Wild salmon is very high. Farm salmon is achieved through what they feed the salmon. And farm salmon, um, you really, it's important any farm fish to know your sources. And so, um, like at Whole Foods, when we started getting farmed salmon, I, I, like, I 
wrote and I found out exactly what feed they give them because <laughs> I wanted to know what the source of omega-3 is. And um, the one thing I also love about Whole Foods is that anything we source, it's a, a vegetable, a fish, a, um, a, an animal, we know the farm, and we know that they, um, we stay connected to them, they follow our quality standards. So like our farmed fish are um, completely traceable, we know everything they feed and we know the growing practices um, on how, because fish can be farmed in many different ways. Some are good and some aren't. Um, so generally, yes, salmon and cold water fish are sources of omega-3s and that's why they're really great to include in your diet. And so are grass-fed meats. <clears throat> yes? Oh yeah. Where? Is it, is it starting, now I haven't seen it, but I don't want this for me. Is it losing the drink when it's starting to turn brown? Mm, it's not, not that I'm aware of. It's just oxidation. Um, so fiber, um, healthy fat. Dark green leafy vegetables are a source of omega threes. Um, dark green leafy vegetables are also, and I know this is going to be, you, this is something you should read about and make your own decision. Uh, but there's a lot, and I personally believe that um, it's, um, they're much better for our bones than uh, dairy products are. And the reason is because um, for our bones to properly use the calcium that helps us, um, there has to be a uh, balance of magnesium and also vitamin K. Dairy products do not have that. And guess what's perfectly in ratio in a dark green leafy vegetable? Nature knew just what it was doing. Everything we need is in there, and so, and it's a food source, so we can, um, it can just be easily and quickly assimilated into our bones. And so it's very good for your bones. Excess protein can be tough on our bones, so, so is excess sugar. All right, more questions? Yes. Uh, well, uh, collard greens, um, you know, collard greens even for me are something I'm like, oh yeah, I should make some collard greens. I tend to skew towards some of the others. Um, if you, if you uh, blanch them real quick in, in boiling water, they work great as a uh, sandwich wrap if you're trying to avoid or avoid, you know, more of the, the bread products. Um, one way I like collard greens, and again, you can just Google anything, you know, and that's, everything's so available. but. Um, is, um, uh, well, let's see, on collard greens, I can't really completely show you, but the one thing I would do with a collard green is um, lay it flat on a cutting board and run my knife and pull out the center leaf. These are very small, but often it's a much bigger, more mature, and those ribs are pretty tough to deal with, so I'd take those out um, before I used it in something. And um, uh, I, I love taking a whole bunch of red onions and chopping them up and sauteing them in olive oil really slowly so they caramelize and then I saute in chopped uh, collard greens. It's simple. Salt and pepper, it's yummy. Yummy simple. Food doesn't have to be complicated. Um, I need a volunteer to put on some gloves and start uh, mixing this in for me. It's fun. Anyone had a frustrating day so far today? It's a great way to get out your frustration. Come on, somebody. Because if you use raw kale in a salad, and I actually argue with our prepared foods team all the time, uh, and yet customers love it and buy it, but we do a raw kale salad with other ingredients in it, and they just like toss it all together. I'm like, no, with kale, when it's raw, you have to massage it. So you're gonna get in there. You're gonna like squeeze the heck out of it. So what you're doing, is you're doing two things, you're, and it's, you know, if you have kids at home, or you, like I said, you had a tough day, you just wash your hands and massage them, yeah. Um, it mixes the avocado, like literally you can like squeeze it, yeah. It mixes the avocado in because the avocado and the lime juice and the tamari are gonna basically be the dressing, and it breaks down the, the fiber in the kale, so it's, um, it's more pleasant to eat. All right, just squish, you're being much too delicate. <laughs> just like, you got to squeeze it. Literally think about squeezing an orange, like squish, like that. Like, yeah, that's it, that's it. And thank you for volunteering. And so, what's your name? Jen. Jenny is massaging, and I am going to, um, yeah, you can't say massage, you have to say massage. Um, I have no idea why. 
And so I'm going to toss in the rest of the ingredients. I also love this because it has lots of great colors in it. We've got greens and, okay, that's probably awesome. Yep. Thank you. So um, I have trash right here. And you could probably just do the old, uh, pull them off over there. Okay, so throw in some bright orange carrots. Um, well, this gives me a chance to talk about organics. I brought you organic apples. These are organic carrots. Carrots, I, um, I just think they taste better when they're organic. You can do your own taste test. I just think they have a lot more flavor as organic. Um, but when you are trying to shop and think about, you know, where do I spend my money? Because still, organic foods do cost more. And you're trying to, you know, be, make good choices and manage a budget. Um, do any of you know about the Dirty Dozen Fruits and Vegetables? No. Yeah. Some too? Okay, I got it. One no. All right, so this is something you can Google. It's changed, it's updated every year by a nonprofit group called the Environmental Working Group. And uh, it lists, so it tests uh, produce and fruits and vegetables. And um, you can tell this is a very, very delicate recipe. <laughs> Um, red onions, um, and it tests these, it does a uh, number, I think it's three power washings, and then tests um, for the amount of pesticide residue um, that, is, that remains, and those that, that retain the greatest amount, sesame seeds, um, which are also high in calcium, um, the, that that retains the greatest number become the top on the dirty dozen. And um, so what I've over used over the years, lime, um, with my family, and now hopefully since they're on their own, they're all practicing it, but who knows, um, is that those foods or fruits and vegetables that I eat or my family eats frequently, I pay the extra to buy it organic. And for those that are, you know, just they're, they're uh, low on it, then, you know, it's, that's a personal decision. Some people feel... Some do believe there's a nutrient difference. Some, it's taste. Um, so that, you, you know, you have to just make as a personal decision. So um, apples are on the top of the list. So I never bring apples that aren't organic. Um, berries are up there. Some greens. Um, yeah, dirty doesn't, but please put fruits and vegetables so you'll get some fun stuff. <laughs> All right, so hopefully, all right, so I think I have everything in there, so I will, since you're not really volunteering, I'll smoosh this up again with some fresh gloves. And I'm gonna need help, someone helping me dish it out for those who want. I did forget one thing, I forgot plates, so I have these little cups. <laughs> so we'll have a little sample, and you can come back for more if you like it, because the bowl will be right here. Again, so this is just a nutrient-dense salad. The fat source are just the avocados. You have no extracted oils. Um, obviously loaded with all the other good ingredients, which is fine. I have to add the tamari. But only if you like it. So there's lots of other, lots and lots of other ways to eat dark green leafy vegetables as well as um, uh, lots of vegetables in general. Just eat more of them. Just push. So isn't it nice to be... Um, directed, I'm not telling you, directed to push in more food. Usually it's like, don't eat too much, avoid this. Um, this is tamari, so it, it works as a little bit of the seasoning. Um, obviously do what I'm doing and taste it. I'm not gonna taste it because you're, I'm gonna share it with you, but taste it and adjust to your desire. Is that soy sauce? Whoops, uh, tamari is a gluten-free soy sauce, yeah. So that's, I, um, that's the dis only distinction. And then like e either are available as a low sodium and I think there's plenty of sodium in it. So I, um, and I haven't talked a lot about sodium because um, there's really nothing wrong with sodium. It's if you have high blood pressure, you have to watch sodium, but you also have to watch potassium and if you eat a lot of vegetables, guess what solves that? Um, but um, it's not to me as vital um, in the bigger picture for most people as uh, avoiding the sugars, the refined carbohydrates, and the right fats. If you have more questions, I'm happy to stay and answer questions um, while, while I'm doing this. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.